Welcome to New World Workforce, where we examine the latest trends having an impact on the way we earn our money and live our lives. I'm Nakia Edwards with my co-host, Parrish Murphy, who's going to tell everyone how to find us. Good day, Nakia. How are you? You can find us through social media on Houston Community College District Facebook page and YouTube. We're also on X, formerly known as Twitter, LinkedIn, and we're also on HCC TV. You can download an audio version of our shows for your listening pleasure at hccs.edu slash podcast. Once again, that's hccs.edu slash podcast. Yeah, thanks so much, Parrish. So look, we're surrounded by digital information from the moment we wake up to when we go to bed at night. Our entertainment, information, economic transactions, and interpersonal communication often take place on a digital platform. This has created whole new career paths, and HCC is helping people thrive in our digital world. We're talking today with Andre Herman, Department Chair for Digital Communication, Digital Gaming, and Simulation. Welcome to New World Workforce, Andre. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing quite awesome, sir. How are you? I'm well, man. Thank you very much. Well, it looks like you got some exciting things to tell us. So tell us some of the ways technology has been integrated in our commercial arts. Well, that's a that's a great question. So uh, one thing I really want to focus on is uh, artificial intelligence or AI. So AI um, has really revolutionized the tools and software and, and enhanced the creativity and productivity in the commercial arts, or we refer to as digital communication. Uh, it's provided us with all kinds of new levels of tools and resources, some of which uh, I'll relate directly to uh, digital photography and design. Um, one, we all have a cell phone in our pocket uh, that has a camera. And believe it or not, um, you know, that camera is utilizing AI to help us create, uh, capture amazing images, and also um, clean those images up and make them look better. So uh, the other thing is generative arts with AI. Uh, that is where we're using engines like MidJourney and other tools to actually create images from um, words typing in just simple words and cues to um, tell the tell the engine what to what we want to see what we want to create uh, one of the ways we're using generative arts in digital communication is actually for concept uh, development and exploration it allows students to take their ideas from their head rather than just writing it down on paper they can now enter those words into um, an AI um, um, generative art engine and see their ideas come to come to fruition visually right in front of them. Uh, the other way that we're using AI is for uh, data visualization. Uh, one of the big things that our students are are learning through uh, graphic design as well is how to visualize numbers and data to help tell a story. Uh, that is a skill that many employers are looking for these days to really help bring numbers um, to the forefront, make them make them look make them look interesting and visually appealing, while also helping effectively tell a story. Uh, finally, we're using AI for copyright and um, copyright and image image protection. And the way that we're using that specifically is uh, AI is being used for image recognition uh, to see uh, if uh, artwork is real or if it's fake, uh, but it's also using pattern pattern recognition uh, to see. Um, so it's using image image recognition and patterns to see if images are, are fake or real. And then we're also using AI to uh, search the internet to see if our images are being used or copied by somebody else. So there's a lot of interesting things going on and technology in the form of AI being integrated into the commercial arts. Wow, that's that's pretty interesting. And so so now tell me what what are the job prospects like, like for digital communicators? Yeah, so uh, here in, across Texas, uh, there are many job opportunities for our, our students uh, and anyone who's interested in uh, digital communication and commercial arts. Um, 
across Texas. There's ad agencies, there's film and the entertainment industry, there's tech and software development, uh, publishing and advertising, and then also the opportunity for uh, freelancing for the entrepreneurial minded students. Now, so so, uh, what are some key skills commercial artists need in the digital environment? So some of the some of the key skills are really uh, to break it down is the fundamentals of design, really design principles, um, uh, composition, color, color theory, things like that. That's really what we teach here at HCC. The first semester is really the fundamentals. Uh, you really, you really can't, you, you, you need to understand the basics before you get, before you really uh, step over and get, you know, over into the more advanced topics. Uh, also, what we teach here is uh, tech, right? Understanding the, the different apps like the Adobe apps, uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. Um, in order to be successful in the digital communication field, you have to understand how to use these softwares uh, to really bring your idea from um, just an idea in your head to something that um, will help solve your client's uh, challenges or problems. Uh, the other thing is a knowledge of typography, uh, understanding the characteristics of different fonts and how they help tell your story and solve visual problems. Um, the other thing is collaboration and communication. Again, um, learning and understanding how to work with people uh, and different personalities, that in itself is, is a fundamental skill. Um, is, there's going to be times where we're working with uh, teams, people we may not um, get along with, but we, we all share one goal and that's to solve that particular problem. And if we're not teaching, if we're not learning how to collaborate and work and communicate, then you know we're, we're not gonna get very far. Uh, finally, UX, understanding user, user experiences and how to, make the, how to make the overall experience of the technology or the uh, the design uh, approachable and aesthetically pleasing is also extremely important and a really hot hot topic these days. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, I mean the, from the fundamentals to the jobs to um, just the technology of, of AI, and, and you mentioned AI earlier. Uh, I, I I always try to explain to people, or my perception of AI is like. The iPhone one with the button trend uh, moving over to the iPhone with no button. It's yeah. just it's 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 like uh, we're moving into a different um, uh, component or going from the BlackBerry to an uh, Apple uh, iPhone. So so how is AI? I mean, you've mentioned AI earlier. How is it? How is that impacting uh, your your industry? Well, so it's. <clears throat> It's really uh, it's revolutionizing it. Um, it's 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 making things. It's making the creative process. Um, it's opening. The, it's opening the door. Actually, it's exploding the lid off of the creative process. Uh, you know, as a faculty member myself, there's oftentimes uh, I, I I'm challenged uh, with, and I meet students who say I'm just not creative. I don't. I can't think visually like that. Um, because they, they feel they can't draw or they can't uh, write or they can't paint. Uh, but now with AI and these, um, these generative art engines, man, they, they can take the words of the idea right from their head, write a, write a simple set of prompts, like the color, the style, uh, the look, the feel of what they're thinking. And uh, this technology will create an image very similar, you know, they'll, they'll be able to see exactly what they're thinking. Um, and what's amazing about that is that then the artist or the designer can take that, use it as a springboard to progress in the creative process. So they're not there to copy exactly what the what the engine's giving them, uh, they're, but they're using it as a further inspiration to develop their ideas. Because, like you said earlier, they just basically tell AI the words and the yep. colors, and you yep. know, integrate this, and 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 you're really shaping it as you're talking to the computers. It's almost like a a back and forth conversation that you're having 
with a computer. Yeah, and it's it's really, you know, I, I know that there's, I, I'm sure there's a whole, this could be a whole other episode, and there's a lot of fear that's saying, oh, AI is going to replace this job or that job. And really, in the end, A, you know, I, I understand that concern, but in the end, you know, A, AI is just a is just a tool, and it's dependent upon how we use it. And really, in the end, clients are still going to appreciate working with another human being. Um, and there's a lot of also copyright topics involved with who owns something that's created by, you know, by an AI engine versus uh, the ability to negotiate usage in a contract with a with a person who designed something. So I think that that's that's really open to discussion in the future as well. But I, I'm not I'm not too worried about it. And so, you know, lastly, what, what do you see down the road for commercial art? Wow, you know that that's really exciting. Commercial art is exploding. So, according to Tex the Texas Cultural Trust, you know Texas has the eighth largest economy in the country, and in Texas alone, there's eight hundred and forty five thousand people have an art have a creative art job. That's one in fifteen jobs in Texas is creative arts, and um, you know with with all of with Texas booming and with uh, you know people constantly coming here and relocating here and bringing different industries. Uh, there's so much diversity here that, and even during COVID, um, you know, graphic design didn't really slow down and neither did our department in offering that education. Uh, because even though, even though doors shuttered, people still needed to promote their business. They still needed to sell things online and they needed designers there to do that. So that's pretty um, good. Right. Yeah, it's only and it's only growing. It's growing and it's it's getting better. The the industry has grown thirty percent in the last uh, ten years. So uh, if that gives you any idea of how healthy yeah. this industry is, well, look, I I, I see it, it. It you can see it uh, booming, and we are very much uh, excited. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, you know, there is a threat of of definitely uh, you know of, of jobs being moved, but I think it also creates new jobs and. And a lot of companies are repurposing their their staff and and are trying or making attempts to do so. But look, man, we appreciate you. Thanks so much for joining us today, Andre. Uh, uh, we have Andre Herman, the department chair for digital communication and digital gaming and simulation. Uh, thank you so much again. We're going to take a short break and then we'll meet one of HCC's industry partners and get their perspective on changes in commercial arts. <music> My vision for HCC's AI program focuses on real-world education, propelling our students to be leaders of innovation. We will build lasting partnerships with our brilliant community of space and technology experts. I know we're doing interesting things in preparing students for the space industry. Can Dr. Barilla Hopkins' avatar tell us more? ACC's bachelor's degree in AI and robotics is the first of its kind in the nation. We here at ACC merge theory with practical hands-on skills. Our partnerships with tech giants like Intel and AWS provide our students with real-world projects and job opportunities. Begin your journey from HCC to the stars. Let Sam know about something even more urgent than his morning coffee. Hey Sam, did you know it's kitten season? Right now, thousands of kittens are in shelters across the nation and they're in need of love and care. When there are too many kittens in shelters, they aren't able to receive the individual attention they so desperately need. That's where you come in. By fostering a kitten, you can provide the care they need until they're ready to be adopted. If you foster a kitten, even for a week, you'll be giving them a chance to grow up and find families of their very own. What's in it for you? A kitten will fill your home with joy, your movie night with lots of cuddles, and they'll even help your social posts look way cuter too. 
And if you foster a kitten, you'll be provided with everything you need to care for your furry friend. You just provide the love. Save some tiny lives. Adopt or foster a kitten today. To learn more about how you can make a life-saving difference, visit bestfriends.org slash kittens. Welcome back to New World Workforce. I'm Parrish Murphy. Extended reality or XR is one of the newest areas of digital arts. Josh Bankston is a partner and solutions architect with Mace Virtual Labs. Welcome to the New World Workforce Show, Josh. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited yeah. to be here. Great. I want to jump right in. Um, we hear a lot about virtual reality and extended reality. What is your definition of those terms? So having been in the industry now 11 years, um, I've seen a lot of change to the nomenclature for sure. Uh, we started up very siloed, virtual reality being fully immersed, uh, fully occluded from your, your surroundings. And then we had augmented reality, which is anything where you're putting some kind of a digital uh, representation inside of an experience. So let's say a heads up display, like a HoloLens, or even down to you know, a, a Snapchat lens, uh, a, a custom overlay into what's going on in your physical space. And as the industries have grown and devices have uh, made the, the capabilities for both virtual and augmented reality a, a possibility in the same headset, I've seen we've started to move more towards an XR uh, representation. So the whole industry is represented as this XR or immersive tech uh, field. Great. Now tell us about Mace Virtual Labs and some of the projects that you guys work on. I'm glad you asked. Uh, Mace Virtual Labs has been in business for about seven years now. Uh, we are a turnkey services provider and distributor for all of the hardware in the XR space. That means we work uh, very closely with our partners at Meta, Pico, HTC, Vario, et cetera. Um, and then also, we bring together um, solutions providers that are, do things like full body haptic solutions or locomotion uh, solutions like treadmills. The idea is bringing somebody into a digital space in any way, shape or form can be immersive. And our clients and customers range everyone from mom and pop shops up to Fortune 50 companies. So being the the source for all of that knowledge and capabilities of the entire industry for our customers is our biggest key value add. So we help customers deploy at, at scale, any kind of immersive solution where we reduce the friction from that process and help to make sure that they find success. Now, outside of video games, how has virtual reality helped businesses? Oh, that's, such a, such a great point, right? Because when we started this company, I would say the majority of our focus was on entertainment. You know, it seems like an obvious thing uh, that some kind of virtual reality went hand in hand with gaming, right? Today, I'd say that probably represents less than 5% of our business. The majority of our work is in the B2B market space, helping enterprises, um, uh, health and medical, government, and military, education, uh, focus on training, focus on communication and collaboration, um, uh, digital representation, like building digital twins, taking not just the concept of building a mile long refinery, but making the entire refinery in a 3D space that you could walk through and make sure that every piece and part is in its place, everything works correctly, um, everything's laid out in, in not just a aesthetic manner, but in a functional manner too. So it allows us to be very iterative and dream big and try to experiment with what's possible without necessarily having to do all the physical implementation first. So this is a prerequisite. The physical implementation still has to be done. This is the prerequisite to that. Absolutely. I mean, it's we have cases where it's saved companies millions upon millions of dollars by just having this prior implementation done first. And again, being able to immerse yourself, being able to stand there in the facility and take in where where things laid out, um, engineers, uh, design reviews, uh, uh, project managers, every level, every step of the project finds value in the ability to 
step into an immersive space. And that is just the digital twin aspect, right? We have so much more uh, greenfield opportunity for the immersive space. Okay, so if you're looking, if you want a, a virtual tour of something, mm -hmm. what do you guys do? Do you guys look at plans and then go from the plans? How do you create this this um, this this visual? There's, there's a bu bunch of different ways to attack that, right? That's kind of like asking, um, what does it take to build a house? Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of house? What, how fast do you want to build a house? <laughs> a lot what of money. <laughs> right. Uh, so, you know, I like to tell my uh, customers, it's uh, or some of my partners even, where, you know, you got price, you got timeline, and you've got quality. Pick two. What are the most important to you, right? Because you're going to sacrifice one for the others. And then once we find out where your project goals are, then we can align with what the outcome looks like. Because sometimes just rough shotting things together, getting a, a basic outline using primitives like cubes and, and uh, spheres and things is enough, right? We just need a physical representation, representation of something six feet versus something 100 feet, et cetera. Sometimes you need photorealistic, you know, AAA studio, uh, Marvel movie quality, um, special effects that's all possible it just depends on what your implementation is what your return on investment needs to be and how do you find success with all that and finding the right partner can often spell success in that that manner too great now obviously you guys have a company what skills do you look for in your employees somebody who's driven technically and is a problem solver um really at the end of the day a lot of this is as new emerging tech right we we don't know what we don't know if i went back to 2004 and said hey i've got this great idea man let's we're gonna build an app first of all you're gonna be like what the heck is an app on my flip phone um and then i said no no it's it's gonna live on everybody's phone and you're just gonna allow you to have a taxi anywhere you go i'm gonna call it uber you, you probably would have laughed at me right you would have said this is a silly idea but once we had ubiquity of the technology in everybody's pocket uh a smartphone to tap into with gps location uh, high-speed data, and then a, uh, a a gig workforce available, then we could put the pieces together. So now that we're starting to get to ubiquity of immersive tech, you're starting to see very capable smartphones and smart devices that are very good at doing augmented reality. I mean, look at the TikTok filters and things that people use uh, daily, right? Um, to just virtual reality headsets out there. There's uh, tens of millions of uh, Quest devices out there in the wild, not to, not to mention all the other manufacturers. Now we're starting to see some very innovative approaches on how to accomplish things. It's just a manner of how do you apply what you're trying to achieve in a new and, and emerging tech field? And can you problem solve around that challenge? Because it's not necessarily about the tool, it's how you implement the tool. Gotcha. Now, how does a program like HCC's Digital Communications set, set students up for success in your field? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, a great step in the right direction, right? Being, being able to expose uh, learners to the paradigm of commercial arts and digital communication and how you take current uh, standard practices and then apply them to future and emerging texts having access to labs like Houston Community College has with a bunch of uh, VR and AR devices. Um, anytime you're able to put hands-on time with the technology, you are 10 steps ahead of the competition when you're going to find jobs or you're trying to grow and scale your, your current position or maybe make a lateral transition to another company that is looking for your skill set, but is needing to have somebody who understands what is possible, or even uh, on the right path to understanding that. It's, uh, I always tell people getting into immersive tech and trying to explain what it's like to be in here is a little bit like explaining what it's like to ride a roller coaster if you've never been on one, right? I can spend all day explaining how great it is. And we can stand next to the roller coaster and you can hear your friends having a great time or having a, not a great time. But until you do it yourself, you're not going to understand intrinsically what that means to you and how it applies to your vision, your goals, and what you're trying to achieve. Right. Now, what advice would you give someone wanting to make a career move into this particular industry? 
again, hands on time, man. It's it's one of the unique things that at Mace is that we work with literally every industry. Any kind of business that you can dream of, we probably already work or have worked with that industry in the past. It's because uh, immersive tech is is a hammer, it's a screwdriver, it's it's um it's a brush. It it is a tool that it unlocks the capabilities of what you're trying to achieve. So I I challenge people not to think so much as well, how do I move into VR? It's how do I take what I'm passionate about and how do I find opportunity in a new industry that doesn't ha that isn't already oversaturated with professionals with 20 years of experience? How can I move my passion into an industry and apply it in an immersive way that sets me apart, that helps me be more unique or stand out uh, amongst the rest of my peers? Sounds good. And finally, before I let you get out of here, what do you see the next exciting advancement on the horizon being in this industry? Uh, you know, there's a lot of really cool things happening. Um, uh, Apple coming onto the scene in a big way this year was certainly uh, helpful to the industry writ large. But I think more importantly, uh, what is coming is the, the convergence of artificial intelligence with immersive tech. One of the challenges you have with a new industry is, is a chicken or the egg problem. You can't build and fund building new advanced cutting edge hardware without software and experiences to drive it. Well, you can't build and fund software and experiences to drive hardware that doesn't exist. So how do you bootstrap both things at the same time? Well, it turns out AI and collaboration tools with AI rapidly speed up the prototyping and the implementation phases. It reduces the cost of entry, it breaks down barriers, and it allows folks to create at the speed of imagination. And once that actually truly happens, then we have this immersive space that means so much more and has so much more opportunity. Those colliding together is probably one of the biggest moments in tech evolution. Wow. Listen, thank you so much, Josh, for joining us today. His name is Josh Bankston, and he is Partner and Solutions Architect with Mace Virtual Labs. Thank you for joining us, man. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. Happy to be here. And if you like more information on the people and organizations featured today, check out the posts on our social media sites and YouTube. To download a copy of the audio podcast version of this show, visit hccs.edu slash podcast. That's hccs.edu slash podcast. For my co-host, Nakia Edwards, and all the wonderful people who helped put this together at HCC TV, I'm Parrish Murphy. Thank you for joining us today on New World Workforce.